Hey everyone, welcome back to net.touchsplus.com. We are, in this video, going to be taking a look at uh, JavaScript testing. If you've never done it before, we're going to take a look at the simplest form, but what actually proves to be very effective for most projects. So unless you're building some huge library, like a huge JavaScript library, most likely you just need a very basic form of uh, testing. You don't need some huge test suite. So we're going to build this. This is based upon uh, just a couple functions written by John Resig that work perfectly, and we'll use it in our own projects. Okay, so I'm going to go into Espresso, close this out, and we just have a basic structure set up. So the first thing we need to do is create an area for our results. Okay, UL, and we'll give it an ID of output. Okay, now within our script, we need to uh, create a variable that grabs this output. It creates a list item and inserts it into it. And this list item needs to contain the results of our test. Okay. Let's get that started first. Let's go ahead and get that output. So document.get element by ID output. Okay, next we are going to create our function. So as I noted, this is, uh, I learned this from John Resig. I think it was one of his earlier books, maybe the uh, Pro JavaScript Techniques, I think it was called. Anyways, this function is going to be called assert, and it's going to receive Two, two values. The first one is going to be the outcome. This is going to be a true or false that we're testing. And the second one is going to be just a short description. Okay, so let's go in here. And first, li, let's create an element. So create document.create element. Create that list item. Now we need to give it a class name. So class name. And this is where we need to determine if it is it going to be pass or fail. So the way we can determine that is figure out what the value of outcome is. So I can say outcome. If outcome is true, then we know it passed. Otherwise, fail. Okay. So create a list item and give it a class dependent upon the outcome of pass or fail. Okay, next we need to create a text node because we need to uh, add the description. So pin child and we'll say document.create text node description. Okay, that should do it. So get the list item, add a text node. A text node, if you're not familiar, is just uh, just adding text. It's just the way we have to do it with the DOM. And this will be the description of what we're testing, whatever you want to add. Okay, and then the final step is to simply go output dot append child list item. And really, that should do it. That is the extent, and this will work just fine. So we'll create a function, create a list item, assign it a class of pass or fail, depending upon whether outcome is true or false. Uh, then we add a text node, and this will just be whatever description we provide, and we add that list item to our UL. That's fine. Okay, so just to keep things clean, I'm going to keep this all within its own script tag, and then we'll create another one. Okay, so let's create our first test. Uh, we'll do two. Uh, the first one is... Um, I don't know. Let's do var some array. Let's just create an array. Just fill it with a couple items. And let's create a length. We need to cache that. It's always a good practice. Um, array.length. And then also our iterator. Okay, that should be good. Let me scroll down here. And next, let's filter through them. So we'll say for i is less than length, i++. plus plus. Okay, we're going to take a common look at uh, something that might get you, and it's dealing with closures. So let's do a set timeout, and we'll say uh, run a function, and we're going to do this every, and I'm going to say something like i times 300. This is pretty common. So all we're doing here is for staggering. So the first time i will be equal to uh, zero, so that'll be run almost instantly, and then the next one will run at 300 times i, then 300 times the next value of i, and it's just a way to stagger it. Okay, and within set timeout, we're going to use our assert function that we created. Okay, So we know that we need to pass it two values. The first one is the outcome. So this needs to be a true or false value that we pass. So there are times when you need to test something and make sure it equals, or there are other times maybe when you just want something more along the lines of like a console log. And in those cases, you can just pass true. So let's say we're going to do that for this first one. And we'll say true, and then the description will be checking the value of i. Okay, so we're going to run set timeout, and let's see if you want to pause this and figure out what you think i is going to be equal to 
for each occurrence. All right, let's go ahead and preview it. Five, 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 five. So this is confusing, especially at first. It got me when I was first learning. Because we know i is 0, and every time in this for loop, i increases by 1. And all we do here is pretty much, we're in this case, just logging i, but it comes to 5 every single time. How come is that? And it's because of closures. So if we want to do something a little more official, why don't we, rather than just doing true, if we actually want to test, let's do, um, just for this example, we'll do var count equals 0. And we want to test to make sure that count plus plus is going to be equal to i. Okay, so we know that there are zero, both zero by default. So I just want to make sure that these values are the same at all times. So the first time it goes through it counts, it's going to be equal to zero. So we're saying uh, check to see if zero equals i, which should be zero, and that'll be true or false. And then we uh, increase count by one afterwards. So this very first occurrence count equals one or I'm sorry, count equals zero, zero equals zero, it should be, should be true, and then we add one, and that's the same thing as right here. So let's test it now. Preview, and we still get checking the value of five, but we still don't have any kind of pass type fail. So let's do that, and we can do that within uh, style tags at the very top. And all I'm gonna do here is, we know we have two uh, properties. We have pass and fail, right? So for pass, I'm gonna do before, and all we'll do here is just give it some content, and I'll say pass, something like that, and then let's give it a color of blue is usually for pass, and then give it a font weight of bold. Okay, now for fail before, we're going to do the opposite, so content, fail, and color is going to be red, and we'll also do the font weight of bold. All right, let's try that now that we have some properties here. Preview. And now we get fail, 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 fail. So how can we fix this? As we learned, we need to use, um, we can use a function. So we're, we're dealing with closures here, and this is what the issue is. So why don't we try this instead? We'll run a function, and we'll wrap it in a function. Close it out and call it, and we're going to pass i to it. And this way we can hold on to that value of i for each time. So for i, and then i is less than the length, i plus plus, and then we're going to run a function, but we're going to pass i to it, and that can be represented whatever you want here. You can change that to index, anything we want. We'll just keep it as i. And of course, let's make sure we add that. Sorry about that. One more time. And now we're getting in because we dealt with the closure, so we're getting pass, pass, pass. Okay, so that's your first example of working with a cert. If you want something a little more simple, uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's go ahead and comment this out. And let's just do something super simple as well. We'll do a function add, and it's going to accept num1 and num2. This is, you know, your first function type, type work. And all we're going to return is num1, not any checking at all, just return num1 plus num2. Okay, so we're going to add, and we're going to do 5 and 20 or something. And we know that's going to return 25. So var result's going to be equal to add. And let's assert that. So let's figure out what that is. So assert, and we know result should equal 25 based on our testing. So let's check and make sure that that's the case. Uh, checking the add function, something like that. Okay, let's try that out. Save it. Preview, and we do get pass. So let's try it out, and let's say within this function, remember in real world projects, this could be way more complicated, and let's say we made some kind of mistake, and I don't know, just we made some wrong uh, calculation. So now let's try it. Preview, and we get fail. So this is just the basic gist of working with a very simple type JavaScript testing thing, and you can see by just adding a single function of cert, you can do a lot of cool stuff here, whether you just need to log something or you need to assert. Um, just make sure that your first parameter always needs to end up being true or false or undefined or some kind of um, truthy or falsy value, and then you add a description. So let me know if you have any questions, and we can talk more in the comments. See ya.